This week on TGC News, Glock is out of ideas, Silencer Co. is back in the game, and Savage makes your kids' guns look better than yours. Birchwood KC's selection of shooting products is astounding. Whether you're looking for the best targets to zero your gun, or maybe you want to refurbish a forgotten classic, or maybe you just want to slam some steel and have a good time at the range. And don't forget that ear and eye protection. No matter what kind of shooter you are, Birchwood KC has what you need. And because you watch TGC, they're going to help you out with a discount of 10% off your entire order when you use the code TGC10 over at birchwoodcasey.com. Welcome back to another episode of TGC News, gun news you actually care about. My name is John Patton. Before we get started, there is a new home for the TGC podcast and a bunch of other content that doesn't really fit here on the main channel anymore. There is a link to the new TGC Surplus channel in the description, and I'd love it if you guys could go over there and get subscribed. Do it. Also, there will not be a show next week because I will be down in Georgia at the IV8888 Range Day. Now, how about some news? There is a ton of stuff to cover this week. Let's start it off with three new ones from Glock. First, they've continued the MOS or Modular Optic System lineup with the new G17 and G19 MOS, both with front slide serrations. Not too much new going on with these besides the optic cut on top and the serrations. Whee! <laughs> and of course, there is also another new one from Glock, the Glock 45, which is a nine mil. And before they actually, guys, fire up their annoyance powered keyboards. Well, did you know actually? I know the number on the gun, the model on the gun comes from their patents, but I don't care. It's a dumb name for a nine millimeter, just like the 40 was a dumb name for the 10 mil. It's also a weird combination of a lot of features we've already seen on Glocks. A lot of folks have been saying that this is essentially a black 19X and that's not exactly correct. It does share the same, we have too many Glock 17 mags laying around mentality when it comes to the grip size. And it also has the ambi controls in the 19X and a four inch barrel like the 19 and 19X. But it does have some features that are not identical to the 19X. First and most obvious would be the front slide serrations. This is something Glock should have implemented on all of their guns years ago, but they take the European gun company slash Apple approach of not listening to what consumers want and just putting out something marginally improved every year. Beyond the serrations, they've also tweaked the bottom of the grip. Where the 19X has an overbite and a lanyard loop, the G45 has a flared magwell and a kind of flat line across the bottom, like the rest of the Gen 5 lineup. Now, let's be fair here. No matter how much I rip on Glock for marginal improvements, these guns are still fantastic. They're mostly affordable, around 600 bucks retail, and the reliability is something that every other pistol manufacturer has been chasing for decades. These new guns will likely be no different. Would I like to see Glock pushing more innovative designs forward? Absolutely, but it's not a really bad thing to have a gold standard for reliability being kind of improved upon. What do you guys think? Is the G45 the gun you've been dreaming of or will you be looking elsewhere for a new carry piece? Let me know down in the comments. Modular suppressors are not a new thing. The concept of a shooter deciding how many baffles or what kind of configuration they want out of their silencers is straight up commonplace these days. One of the companies that really pushed the modular suppressor concept forward was Silencer Co. With them, it started back in 2014 with the Salvo 12, and then continued with the Osprey Micro in 2016, and then the Maxim 9 after that, and now we have a new modular can from Silencer Co. called the Switchback 22. In my opinion, the 22 Sparrow from Silencer Co. was one of the cans that put them on the map, so seeing this new 22 can, another 22 from them, is exciting. Let's break down the features. In its smallest configuration, the can is 2.5 inches long and weighs 3.2 ounces. The middle size is 3.6 inches long and weighs 4.3 ounces, and the largest one weighs in at 6.5 ounces and is 5 and 3 quarter inches long, so you basically have three suppressors in one. 
Not only that, but if you flip the longer baffle stack around, they're calling that setup rifle optimized. And that's how they're claiming to get 108 decibels with CCI standard velocity out of a 16 inch rifle. That would make it one of, if not the quietest 22 can on the market right now. It's also full auto rated with 22 long rifle and semi auto rated with 17 Wisdom, 17 HMR, 22 Magnum, and of course 5.7. I'm hoping to get my hands on one of these things to see exactly how quiet it really is and how it stacks up against other cans on the market. Because if that decibel rating is true and it holds up, the MSRP of 499 is a really solid deal. I'm curious to know what you guys think of this thing though. There's a few other modular options out there. There's a few other really good cans. Would this be the one that you grab? And speaking of rimfire guns, Savage Arms just announced three new ones, but they're not for you, they're for your kids. You might be familiar with those kind of little novelty guns that you see at the register of gun stores called the Savage Rascal. They're usually in a rack and they're pretty small, but they are single shot bolt action guns that are pretty cool. In my opinion, it's one of the best ways to get a kid started shooting and be able to teach them on something that actually fits them properly. But unfortunately, if you wanted to keep things quiet for the new shooter in your life, you had to go get a different gun. No threaded version and a super tiny profile barrel equals no silencer. Well, that is until now. Savage just announced the Rascal FVSR as well as the Target and Target XP. The FVSR comes with a synthetic stock like the standard Rascal, but also features a heavy barrel threaded half by 28, as well as the Savage AccuTrigger. It also has a larger bolt handle. The Target has those same features, but also has a precision style stock made of hardwood and comes with a Picatinny rail on top of the receiver. The Target XP is that same rifle with a mounted and bore sighted four by 32 scope and a Harris style bipod, so you can get shooting right out of the box. Honestly, I wish I had something like this when I was a kid. This, this kind of stuff just didn't exist. In my opinion, these are awesome. I love this. The FVSR has an MSRP of $219. The Target is $314 and the Target XP is $399. There's no question in my mind about these being awesome single shot starter rifles for kids, right? However, the question that comes to mind is about value. Do you wanna spend that much money on a rifle that the kids are gonna grow out of? For me, I'm tempted to buy one of these for kids that don't exist yet. I don't have kids, but I really wanna get a hold of one of these rifles because I think they're that cool. I'm curious to see what the parents out there have to say though. Would you spend that much money on a gun that they're definitely gonna grow out of? Tactical Baby Gear offers some of the coolest diaper bags, baby carriers, and day packs for the mom and dad that love freedom. Whether it's the Deuce 2.0 diaper bag combo with the bottle and dump pouches, the Day Pack 3.0, or maybe just the Tactical Teddy, you are bound to find something that works for you and your tactical baby. Also available are the new bulletproof panels that are level 3A Kevlar soft panels that fit inside either the backpack or diaper bag. To get squared away and get 10% off your order, use the code TGC10 at tacticalbabygear.com. It's time once again for Friendly Fire, the segment where I answer your questions from all over social media. Our question of the week, prize pack this week is brought to you by Pew Pew Tactical. Be sure to click the link in the description to learn more about them and what they do. Our first question this week is from Instagram user Kiarbear123, and he wants to know if I think Milserp firearms are always a good investment. The answer is no, they are not always a good investment. There are a lot of junk Milserps out there. I'm far from an expert on which ones are good and bad, but as a whole, not all of them are worth buying. MFIC Kareem on IG says, what do you believe will be the new trend in the gun industry? For instance, slide cuts for optics on pistols is a big thing now. I think the next trend that is sort of already developing in companies that built themselves on AR-15s or try to get into AR-15s in the last few years, I think they're gonna switch gears and try to get into affordable precision rifles. We've seen this with the Ruger Precision and the TC LRR, but I think we will continue to see that market growing and evolving. I'm not sure what caliber is gonna be the top dog. Obviously we'll see 308s and 6.5s, but we could see some really interesting stuff in the bolt action market in the next 
few years. And our question of the week and the winner of a Pew Pew Tactical swag pack with the t-shirt, pistol case, and more is Kyle McDermott 03 on Instagram. He says, at what age did you become interested in firearms? Kyle, that's a, that's a really good question. My story is that I grew up with guns in the house. My dad was a casual hunter, and my brother and I were in the Boy Scouts at a young age. We shot and it was a thing. We knew gun safety, etc. However, after Scouts was over, the most I did was plink with a single shot 22 in the backyard from time to time. I was far from really being interested in the guns and more so interested in shooting. Then, back in 2009, I was getting out of the car scene and I found a new hobby. I was 25 years old and to be honest with you, I jumped in head first and here I stand today with an incredible collection of really interesting firearms and more knowledge than I ever thought I could soak up about a single topic. It's a really good question, man. Be sure to get me your info so I can get you the swag pack. My friendly fire question to you guys at home this week. How many rounds do you shoot every year? Give me your best guess at that number. I'm really curious to see where we all stack up against each other and hey, if you want your question answered right here on the show, send it to me over on theguncollective.com. And that is it for this week's show. Guys, if you disliked the video, hit that button. If you liked it, hit like, get subscribed, and consider supporting us via the links in the video description below. We have an Amazon affiliate store as well as a link to purchase cool shirts just like this Guntrepreneur shirt. You should definitely buy one because it's rad, and I came up with this. And of course, links to find us all over your favorite social media platforms. And as always, thank you all for watching. We'll see you soon. This way, this way, this way. Salutes. <laughs> Dog show. Dog show. The shirts worn in today's video on the Gun Collective have been provided by Patriot Patch. Closed captions have also been brought to you by Patriot Patch Company. Be sure to click the link in the video description to check out all of their great products, including their cleaning mats.